the Black Swan Group. This is your consulting firm. And a quick description of the Black Swan. Black Swan theory tells us that things happen that were previously thought to be impossible or never thought of at all. This is not the same as saying that sometimes things happen against a one in a million odds, but rather that things never imagined do come to pass. The idea of the back black swan was popularized by Nassim Taleb in his best-selling books, Fooled by Randomness and the Black Swan. But the term goes back much further. Until the 17th century, people could only imagine white swans because all swans ever seen had possessed white feathers. In the 17th century London, it was common to refer to impossible things as black swans. But, when the, but then the Dutch explorer, William de Vlamen, sorry, people of Holland, Went to Western <laughs> Just Australia. To Holland, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did indeed. Apologies to Holland. Uh, went to Western Australia in 1697 and saw a black swan. Suddenly, the unthinkable and unthought was real. This is a crucial concept in negotiation. In every negotiation session, there are different kinds of information. There are those things we know, like our counterpart's name and their offer and our experiences from other negotiations. Those are known knowns. There are those things we are certain that exist, but we don't know, like possibility that the other side might get sick and leave us without another counterpart. Those are known unknowns, and they are like poker wild cards. You know they're out there, but you don't know who has them. But most important are those things we don't know that we don't know. Pieces of information we've never imagined that would be game changing if uncovered. Maybe our counterpart wants the deal to fail because he's leaving for a competitor. These unknown unknowns are black swans. So this is obviously something highly important to you since you named your company the black swan. How did you stumble upon this idea? Well, the idea first, um Caleb's book in 2007, A Black Swan, got me thinking about it. I, I like his stuff. I mean, he's a high, highly in-depth thinker. Um, he's, got a, he's got a writing tone that is not for everybody, but really in-depth. And, and so I saw that I, I, the idea, like the impact of the highly improbable. Well, well, that's what we did all the time in negotiation. It's a combination of two things. We're going to change ourselves in subtle little ways that the other side is never going to see. And we're going to gain the upper hand. We're going to steer it. We're going to steer the negotiation and to the best possible outcome. Now that that doesn't mean that everything's going to a positive out, outcome, but you got to recognize what the best possible outcome is. So it's a great metaphor for making tiny little subtle changes in your negotiation approach. The other side is never going to see where you're going to make all the difference. It's completely invisible. And then while you're in the middle of it. There's always stuff that you, uh, it, it, great stuff will fall out of the sky if you let it. The other side's going to say something that works for you. They're going to talk to you. They're going to be softer in a position than you realize. There's going to be pressures on them that you don't understand. Something is always, always there. And in many cases, the other side doesn't imagine it. And to draw a real fine point on this that a lot of people miss, it's a reason why Reading body language to detect deception is almost a waste of time. Because for you to deceive me, you've got to know it's important to have a tell. You have to be consciously covering that up. But a significant amount of the time, you don't even know it's important. So if I'm just looking for tells and not getting you talking, the stuff that you didn't know was important is never going to come out. So so what, if, so what if you're lying, number one? That doesn't tell me what the truth is. And if we're only focused on what you're hiding, rambling conversation, what might that look like? A woman who's getting um, funding for a film she's doing in Los Angeles a couple years ago, is trying to get $300,000 out of an investor, very focused on this film being shot in LA, very focused on this amount of money, very focused on what they're trying, the point they're trying to make in a film. But she's mirroring and labeling, and out of the blue it comes out that the financier owns a castle in France, which would be a great setting for the next film. Something she never would have brought up, 
the financier, they're talking about a film being shot in L.A., martial arts, this and that, all these other little things. You know, female martial artists beating up bad guys. Like, how is she going to say, oh, by the way, you don't have, I'm working on another film. We want to, it's a medieval film. You don't happen to have a castle in France, do you? Like, that is never going to come up, ever. But she's talking and she's labeling and marrying. And the next thing you know, this, this, this thing comes out that the other person has no idea makes any difference. Changes the structuring of the whole deal. Now instead of talking about one film, they're talking about multiple films. Completely changes the complexion of the, the, the finances that are needed on the first. If she can go back out, she's already got partial packaging on a second film. Like it changes everything. And there's no way that she would have known to ask it. And the person on the other side was, well, instead of 300 grand, what about my castle? Because that's not going to do any good for a film in L.A. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that. Well, one thing that uh, emphasized the importance of listening is, you know, at one point you're talking about a case. You've got a guy that's, you know, uh, drives to drives to Washington, D.C. in a tractor. He's going to blow himself <laughs> up. He's going to blow up uh, some of the. The white ones. Uh, so, yeah. And, you know, he's saying he's going to blow himself up. Um, but when you actually have, you're having conversations with him and you've got multiple people listening. Right. Because listening is so important that, if you, look, if you can get more, more than one person, you get two or three or four people listening to the conversation and they're going to pick things up that someone else might miss. And studying the transcript. So you had someone on the team that realized, number one, he was a veteran. How can we utilize that? And then someone realized he was like a, I don't want to say fundamentalist Christian, but a very strong Christian. And you had a certain religious thing going on. So you're able to utilize these things that people caught just through listening and it changed the dynamics of the whole, uh, of the whole negotiation. Right, right. Kept him from getting killed, got him out a day early. And so that was, you know, short in a timeline. Because he was, he was really at the end of his rope and at each hour went by, he had less sleep, which increases the likelihood that he's going to do something stupid. We're still not 100% sure that there are bombs there. And so if he'd have made a particular move uh, towards where the possibility he, he, had, he had his Jeep and a, a flatbed, and they said, we don't know there aren't explosives in a Jeep and a flatbed. If he goes there, we got to take him out. And we're talking to him, and this comes up, and he's agreed to come out in 72 hours. We want to cut, try to cut 24 off of it. And one of the female negotiators, Winnie Miller, says, you know, tell him tomorrow's the dawn of the third day, which is 48 hours. And I'll come out. That's what he says. And he had talked so much about the military and his 82nd Airborne experience, somebody else listening heard the underlying strong Christian beliefs in there. His, his religion, if you will. Everybody's got a religion. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody has got a religion. Just depend upon what it is and how broadly you define it. Uh, just going to hit some of these. Last section of the book I'll cover. Um, but I just want to hit some of these highlights here. Let what you know, your known knowns, guide you but not blind you. Every case is new, so remain flexible and adaptable. Black swans are leverage multipliers. Remember the three types of leverage, and you go over these in the book. Positive, which is the ability to give someone what they want. Negative, the ability to hurt someone. And normative, using your counterpart's norms to bring them around. Again, there's more detail on the book, inside the book. Work to understand the other side's religion, which you just mentioned. Everybody's got a religion. Digging into worldviews inherently implies moving beyond negotiation table and into life, emotional and otherwise, of your counterpart. That's where black, black swans live. Review everything you hear from your counterpart. You will not hear everything the first time, so double check. Compare notes with team members. Use backup listeners. Exploit the similarity principle. People are more apt to concede to someone when they share a culture, someone they share a cultural similarity with. So dig for what makes them tick and show that you share common ground. When someone seems irrational or crazy, they most likely aren't. Faced with a situation, search for constraints, hidden desires, and bad information. 
and last get FaceTime with your counterpart 10 minutes of FaceTime often reveals more than days of research pay special attention to your counterparts verbal and nonverbal communication at unguarded moments at the beginning and the end of the session or when someone says something out of line so really uh, g- really just awesome points that apply to me they apply to business they apply to interacting with any human obviously they apply to negotiations but um there you go i mean we hit the the wave tops of some of the less i mean I probably read less than five percent of this book uh so many good stories and again i i felt i feel kind of bad that i skipped a lot of the a lot of the stories themselves uh but get the book and and that way you can hear some of the examples behind this so what so what